Good morning, everybody. Today is Friday. We had crazy weather here last night. <clears throat> There's major flooding all over the place. Luckily, we're on top of a hill, so it doesn't really affect us unless we need to leave. A lot of the surrounding communities are kind of underwater, so we're hoping that it stops raining here sometime soon. It's April showers. I guess we've hit records for rain here, so luckily, nothing crazy going on here. Um, I wanted to start off today talking about uh, kind of my the two racks that I think are most important if you're if you're getting racks, and then I want to show some of the cool stuff that was happening with the snakes. So, um, I have the the mini one thirty here. I have the ten sixty five here. This is a seventy thirty, and these are two fifty five forties over here. Um, so obviously, I kind of have almost one of everything. Um, size level wise for what ARS creates. Um, and so I've had quite a bit of experience kind of figuring out how snakes move from level to level. The 7030 is actually the first I got because I thought that's what I needed to have for the ball pythons. Um, and in reality, a very small amount of your snakes are actually going to fit or go into this. And it's really only going to be your biggest females, like your biggest of the biggest females. So, well, this might be necessary if you have older girls or bigger girls. Um, for the 90% of your snakes, I'm not going to require this. And I could even argue that you might even be better off getting a smaller rack system, um, like a PVC rack from somebody else that's a little cheaper than this, if you only have, you know, 5 or 10 snakes that actually need 70 series tubs. Um, so, this is not an important one. Um, <clears throat> the next one that I'm ruling out here would be the 1065. While it's absolutely necessary for me because of the fact that I'm, you know, producing a decent amount of babies, I'm moving them up. This is basically a holdback rack until they get too big for it. I don't really ever have to put snakes I'm selling in here. Um, but I think it's not necessary because of the other rack that you could shift snakes into. So it's it's integral for me as a business owner when I'm creating a decent amount of snakes, um, but I don't think you necessarily have to have it. Which brings us to our last two, the Mini 130 and the 5540. This thing just came out last year in 2023. I picked it up basically right after it came out, and it has been a godsend. Um, I don't know if I would have been able to successfully get through the year last year, if I wasn't using it. Um, these tubs are really perfect for baby ball pythons and for a lot of small snakes, but specifically ball pythons. They fit comfortably in here up to probably about 300 grams or so. Like, as you can see, this boy's just about 300 grams. He's just about ready to come out of here. Um, he's for sale, but he's probably gonna have to move into the 1065 basically at this point because he's kind of getting a little too big for this specific tub so so about 300 grams or so is where i probably suggest moving the snakes out of here um you might be able to get up to 400 but the problem you start running into is when they go potty it's a giant mess in these small tubs and you can't put enough substrate in there because then it's covering up the water bowl or gets in the water bowl too much so um but the biggest kind of perk with this rack system is there's so many tubs in it. It's called the Mini 130 because there's 130 tubs. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I think I even added an extra level, so mine's technically a Mini 140. Um, there's 10, 10 tubs on every level. With any rack system, I think it's absolutely imp important to have a cup holder. Um, I used to use, I can show you over here. I used to use these VE6s and I just, I have these as a backup now. I didn't have hatchling tubs, but I used these. Actually, I did have hatchling tubs. Actually, I think I sold them all. Um, these are kind of like the grow out tubs, like equivalent to 1065. But the hatchlings tubs would fit three on a level and you couldn't fit an actual water bowl in there. So you, they just spilled them all the time. So having these cup holders in here are super important to making your life a lot easier so that you're not constantly. Um, having to worry about water being spilled over. But the fact that this rack fits 130 babies, 
it makes your life so easy. If you're producing 20 clutches a year, you're going to need all of that space to use that. It, at some point during this year, especially because my rainbow bow had 30 babies, it, which filled up three rows. I had all of this, but like four rows filled. Um, and I hurried up and, and sold off those rainbow bows because I wasn't sure how my ball pythons were going to be breeding at that point. But I came close to having this thing filled up. And at that point, I had to start moving out the snakes out of here into here a little younger. But for the most part, your snakes, once they hatch, are going to fit in these tubs for probably six months. Maybe a little more, depending on, on growth rates. And that's super important when you're selling a high amount of ball pythons. Now, that'll bring us back to our next rack, which are the 5540s. Now, I have two of these, and this is going to be the next rack I buy is going to be a third 5540. Now, this is important because you can take some of your snakes that are some of your smaller ones. You can take them directly from the Mini 130 if you needed to. And as you can see here, it's a 5540. I got a nice little hide back here. And we have this Super Pastel DG Het Pied Girl in here. Now, I put her in here um, probably about a month ago at this point. So she's also had a few meals in here as well. But let's measure her, weigh her, I guess. See how much she weighs. So she's only 400 grams. Um, so she was probably, I would say, 350 when we put her in here. Unfortunately, she's deep in shed. She's honestly one of my prettiest snakes. Um, super Pastel. Pastel look really good in DG. Don't don't hate on it. Um, but so she's 400 grams. She is thriving in here. She didn't eat this week because she's in shed. But her sister, who's got some pinstripe in her, did eat. And her other sister is as well. We got three sisters here. How does that look? That's a pretty nice looking snake. Um, so they're all about 400 grams or so. So you could technically, you know, if you didn't have the 65... 1065, you can go from the mini 130, get them to three, 350, 400 grams, put them directly into one of these tubs and, uh, you know, like succeed in growing them out. And you can fit all different size ranges in here. So we have this girl here. She's about, um, I would say, seven, 800 grams at this point. She fits in there. Let's see, I have my adult male lightning pied. Oop, I just took a poop. Guess we're cleaning that today. Um, adult male lightning pied in here. He's probably 15, 1,600 grams, as you can see. Plenty of space for him in there. Um, I have some of my bigger 2,000 gram females. I mean, she's going to be good in here um, for another few months. Unless she keeps eating. She'll, she'll probably end up uh, laying this year in this tub, and then she might have to get moved up to a bigger tub. Uh, this is her sister, who's a lot bigger because she eats a lot more frequently, a pastel DG clown. Um, she's probably getting to the upper limits of being in this tub, so she's probably close to 2,500 grams or so. Um, but these but these snake, these racks, these tubs fit from 300 grams up to 2,500 grams, which is a large portion of your snake's lifetime. Um, now, the only reason I have the 10 series is because I needed, it fits more snakes in the rack. That's 1065, that's five on a level. I think that's probably actually a 1070 because I think I have another, I think all of these racks had an extra level when I bought them because they fit in this room. So that's, that's 70 snakes compared to 44 snakes because there's an extra level. So I have 44 in here and there's 70 in that. And so having that rack, what that allows me to do is it allows me to slowly progress snakes up into those rack systems and allow these bigger ones to be here while they are. Typically what happens is while those are growing out from the 1065, I am breeding or growing up these snakes. And a lot of the times, you know, the way it's going to work is you're going to breed these snakes, get them back on food and possibly sell them because your grow outs are going to be replacing them in these slots. That's basically what my plan is. Now, I'm going to need another rack because I have, I think, 10, 10 holdbacks left from 
this year or in last year, I guess, 2023. And I don't have anywhere to put them. I have like, I guess I do. I have like six spots up there. I have one spot up here. So I have seven spots left. I guess I can re move some of these bigger girls from these two racks into the 7030. And I also have these, which I plan on putting um, my bigger blood pythons in too. I have two of these available. So I probably have eight spots. I probably don't need a 5540 right away, but I will at some point. And some of these snakes are going to get sold because I don't need them all. Um, as I grow things out, it basically it's like a game you're playing. How long is it going to take to grow something? And what do I need to breed now versus breed later? But if you're going to buy two racks, um, I would say the Mini 130, even though... You're only going to use snakes in there for six months. If you're breeding snakes, and if you're breeding 10, 15, 20 clutches a year, it, and you're selling and holding back, it's going to be very important to you. And then the 5540. Uh, there could be an argument you could say that the 1065 might even be a better purchase than the Mini 130 in terms of that, but it fits half as many snakes in it. And if you're breeding 20 clutches, 25 clutches a year, it's going to fill up fast and you're not going to have the space for all those snakes in that rack. So that's why I say this is probably a little more important. Now back to the cool stuff that's happening in the snake room today. The biggest thing we had happen was that my lightning pipe female had her pre lay shed. Now this is the female that laid for me in 2021. Um, I think it was a six egg or seven egg, I think six egg clutch. Um, so she was bred to an OD blade pied double head MJ clown. So what I'm looking for in this clutch are OD blade lightning pods that are head clown. That's what I'm hoping for because she's double visual. Half these babies should be lightning pied anyways. Um, so I'm really just looking for the, 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 uh, lightning pied head clowns. So that's her. She's shed. I should expect eggs here by the middle of May. So I'm very excited for that. And her, this other female, her ovulation is getting huge. So I would hopefully by the end of the month, she is having her prelay shed. And then we had some cool pairings. I don't think these two are locked up anymore, but they were, this is the first, oh, no, maybe they are still locked up. So this is my super pastel Enchi DG clown female. And my Leo Red Stripe Yellow Belly, I don't want to interrupt them too much here, so I don't want to move that tub. Leo Red Stripe Yellow Belly Triple Head DG Clown Pied. So that was her first lock with anybody, um, and his third or fourth lock with a different female. But the most exciting thing for me so far, if you've been watching all season, is that this Confusion Combo Double Head DG Clown Ball hasn't locked with anybody, and he's locking with this female right now. And she's a pastel lesser leopard clown. She actually did breed for me last year, and she's big again. So these could produce like seven or eight gene uh, clowns that are het DG. So that's a pretty exciting thing. This is also good because I can start pairing him up to my DG clown females. And because the Leo red stripe yellow belly triple het male is just a triple het, <clears throat> and he doesn't have any visuals, I'm probably going to just dual sire all those DG clown females to make sure that I'm getting uh, just eggs and healthy eggs out of those clutches. To me, I honestly don't care which one breeds them because they both have the same odds of producing DG clowns. Um, the confusion male has more genes. He has, I think he was leopard, pinstripe, ODYB, confusion, possible fire. Whereas the other one has Leo, yellow belly, red stripe. So the only major difference, I, the biggest gene in those would be the red stripe versus the confusion. But the confusion male has, and the red stripe male has, has also had pied. Um, but the confusion male has more genes, so more codon. So it's, it's a, you know, you either go for trying to hit the head pieds in some of those pos head pieds, or you go for the male that has more genetics. I don't care. All I want to make sure is that I'm hitting some some DG clowns or the possibility of DG clowns. So whichever male is going to do that, whichever male is going to fertilize those eggs or 
is important to me. I could care less who does it. I just want to try and hit some DG clowns this year because I only have those four females. I'd like a double visual male that has a few genes in him. So because my females that I have are uh, pastel, I have two pastels, one's not ready to breed yet. I have two pastel enchies, and I also have an OD vanilla clown het DG female. So the, all the females have one or two genes in them anyways. Um, so we'll pr hopefully we hit some DG clowns, and if they do, there's a good odds that they're going to have one or two or three genes in them. So that's very exciting. I'm very happy with that. I don't know if it was the, the, the record rain we got last night that got that male going, but hopefully now that he is going, he keeps on going because I'd love to be able to alternate those males through this rack because and because that the the red stripe male is he DG and pied, I have a few pied like I have a, this pied head DG female. Let's see, let me get her. I think she's in shed. Yeah, she's deep in shed, but she's ready to breed. I haven't bred her yet. Um, I I don't have any I don't have any double visual DG pieds, so he can go in there. Um, I have an, an OD pied head DG male who's ready to breed, but I've been pairing up him up to my two super OD DG head pied females. I want him to breed them because I'd like to make some super OD DG pieds, and that gives me the best odds of doing that. So that male is focusing on those two females and those two females only. I don't want to spread him anywhere else. I want him to maintain weight and make sure he's breeding those females because I haven't seen any locks yet. So that's what I want him to do. Because this other male is a triple het DG clown pied, I can take him to my pied het DG female and still make some cool eggs there. So it, there's, it's nice to have males that can work in multiple places. If I'm able to move him there and this confusion male starts producing, then that confusion male can spread him a little more. And I'm also going to take him to some other of my just clown females because those babies have a good odds of it being clown. They have good odds of having a bunch of genes in them, and they have a 50% chance of also being het DG. So, you know, if I can produce a five gene clown that's het DG, uh, multiples of those, then I'd be happy. Those are some great holdbacks that I don't currently have. So, um, yeah, this is it. We're rolling in the weekend here. So we will see you guys on Monday. I hope you guys have a great weekend and stayed along for this whole video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you Monday.